have rest. The tallest point on earth. For thousands of years, countless men gawked at the sheer size of it, but none dared to scale it. Climbing it is a punishing, freezing ask that does not allow for mistakes. In 1953, Edmund Hillary and his trusty Sherpa Tenzing Norgay did something incredible. They became the first people to stand atop the world's highest mountain. Today, Everest climbing is a multi-million dollar industry. The base camp even has a Google review with a 4.8 star rating. I'll pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. This queue to reach the summit looks more like a scene outside a Disney ride. Ironically, Edwin Hillary himself was not pleased with the crowds. But before the rampant commercialization, before the rise of the Everest selfie and decades before Edmund Hillary's climb, there was one crazy guy who believed that the world's tallest mountain could be conquered. One man who sacrificed everything for his dream. A climber named George Mallory. In 1924, George Mallory, the chief climber, along with climbing partner Andrew Irvine and eight porters attempted to climb Everest for a British expedition. Because Nepal, where Everest's south face lies, was close to foreigners, they had to climb from the mountain's north side. The north face of Everest is regarded as the most difficult and dangerous of the three main faces. While attempting the first ascent, Mallory and Irvine disappeared and died. The pair were last seen only a few hundred meters from the summit and it's unknown whether they reached it or not. Mallory was 37, Irvine only 22. Mallory's body was found 75 years later in 1999, but there's no proof that he died going up or coming down. Irvine's body and portable camera have never been found. It's quite possible that they did reach the peak and perished on their way down. Statistically, the descent kills more people than the ascent. What madness drove Mallory and Irvine to their deaths at such young ages? Why do some of us choose to play life on the hard mode? What drives some of us to set an unrealistic goal and then embark on a quest to achieve the seemingly impossible? And what causes others to just coast through life without struggling and without wanting to struggle? Yeah, but I'm just saying, Mr. White, two points. The answer is no. Next time, apply yourself. 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 Applying ourselves is hard. David Copperfield claims that it takes him 500 attempts to get a trick right. They say it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert at something, but time is just one factor in the equation. Committing to an idea like this also takes vast amounts of imagination, discipline, fortitude and willpower. This desire to excel, to struggle, to do our best, to be the best, to sacrifice, to be a champion. Is this the very thing that makes us human? I've been pondering this question all day today. You see, I am sort of in the same boat. Last year, I had my own 
I must climb Everest moment. I came across a huge problem. At the time, I didn't know what the solution would be or how it would work, but what I did know was that someone had to do it and it had to be me. Why did I want to do this? Why am I like this? Why did I choose to give up a comfortable, well-paying, 9-to-5 white-collar job to work on my idea 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? When asked why he wanted to climb Everest, Mallory famously replied, because it's there. What he literally meant was, the problem is out there, unsolved, and I can solve it. I know I can do it. If only I apply myself. If only I persevere. So why shouldn't I? There's beauty in problem solving. Faced with a complex problem, wholly dedicating yourself to solving it is a reward in and of itself. And it's beautiful, this sweet fruit of our labor. When Dostoevsky wrote, beauty will save the world, he wasn't referring to beauty that nature creates. He was referring to beauty that humans create by applying ourselves. I choose to think that Mallory and Irvine did reach the summit, that they did stand on top of the world with the entirety of humanity below their feet and the majestic heavens above. But even if they didn't, they gave inspiration to the next generation of mountaineers to follow in their footsteps and there's immense beauty in that. As for my app, I did manage to create it. After all, I applied all the skills I have acquired over the years to the best of my ability and created a product that solves this problem. Wait, 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 hold up. Uh, hello? Was that the Mona Lisa? Did this guy just compare his silly little app? That's not what I was trying to... <laughs> Delusional much? I'm just trying to relate to their frame of mind through my personal experiences. How else could I... Wait, this is an ad for an app? I thought this was like an inspirational philosophical video essay by a pseudo-intellectual. This is a f***ing ad? A pseudo-intellectual? Wow, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <sighs> you know, I clicked on this video because I thought it would inspire me to work harder to achieve my goals or something. I don't want to watch an ad about a stupid dating app. I don't even use those things. They're all the same garbage. Uh, yeah, mine is different. Yeah, right. I've heard it all before. You have a proprietary algorithm that uses artificial intelligence to create my digital avatar that cross-checks compatibility across 44 personality traits. No, and... none of that. Whoa. Hi. Uh, hi. This is interesting. Wait, how do I go back to swiping and matching? Where are the other chats? It's only you and me. To do anything else, we have to get rid of each other. Oh, well, I mean, I don't really want to get rid of you. I I need to think. Sure, you have all the time in the world. Thanks. Eh, I was kidding. If the countdown runs out, the chat is auto-destroyed. There's a countdown? Of course. I cannot allow you to waste my time. You jerk. By the way, what kind of person wants a whole ass app to himself? Definitely not an ass app. Like, I have this thing installed on my phone. And it's all you. Wow. The way you say it makes me feel quite special. Oh, uh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Can I tell you something? This thing is super romantic. Ew, flag! <laughs> what? Yeah, I just gave you one red flag. There are flags? Yes, three. Why? I don't like romantic girls? Question mark? Why did you create a romantic app if you don't like romantic girls? Oh, let me think about that. Mm, why did I... D -d 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 mm -mm. Yeah, I know the answer. The answer is... Uh, I just gave you two more flags for asking annoying questions. Goodbye. What? Are you afraid of commitment or something? No. Wow. You must really like me. I do not. I detest you. Vehemently. Huh, stop 
stop it. You're making me blush. <laughs> Listen, do you have plans for tomorrow evening? Do you want to go out for drinks? Maybe? I'll have to think about it. Sure, you have all the time in the world. <laughs> You're funny. Libel, slander. I shall sue you for defamation. <laughs> do you want my number? No. Gorgeous. I want to stay paired. <laughs> <laughs>